We have had one of the most massive balance changes in all of Hearthstone's history, but if you want my honest opinion, the meta is not diverse at all. Even with all the nerfs, even with all of the buffs, it turns out that there is a particular druid deck that is still on top of the ladder right now. But outside of just showing you guys what is working at top legend, I'm going to show you guys the decks that are working at top legend, the decks that you can play to get into legend, as well as five of my favorite decks that are playable playable in this uh, current format as of right now. So go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel in order to let Blizzard know that you are sick and tired of druid getting nerfed getting nerfed and getting patched and sometimes getting buffed because that's what happened with Frost Lotus Seedling. This card technically did get buffed, but this is by far the best deck in the meta to be playing right now, and it is not even close. This deck is in its own tier up at Top Legend, not just because this deck is extremely powerful, but in the right hands, you could potentially do the, the Jailer... A Nubricon Tony turn by turn five somewhat consistently and it's not just the fact that you're gonna have 10 mana as a druid there are ways of actually popping off this combo as early as turn five and I really don't even know how it's possible but I have seen a screenshot that showcases just how crazy this deck actually is but there you go apparently it is possible to do all of this nonsense as early as five mana and to be honest I don't even know how this is even freaking possible Unless there's like an anomaly that discounts uh, your first minion, but there's not an anomaly active in this game. So it's like, I really don't even know how this happened, because even with double innervate to, to cheat out an Anubricon, and if you get so lucky to somehow discount Solar Eclipse into the, uh, the draw a bunch of cards and gain armor it's just i really don't understand how this is even physically possible but yang ming is just on a whole nother level of hearthstone compared to the rest of us to where this is by far the best deck to be playing and there are not a lot of people that are really happy about this deck completely warping top legend because this is the only deck that you can play if you are trying to get a, a rank one qualification going into worlds there are a lot of people that are unhappy in legend and this is the deck that is causing a lot of the grief and in all honesty i think it's all warranted it is such a problem that people like Insane that are trying to qualify for worlds are not happy with the lack of diversity because look at that uh one two three there there, there are four decks in a lot of games trying to go from you know rank 5 to rank 1 legend and literally everybody i mean everybody is playing druid right now because there is just not another deck that can compete with this if you know how to play the deck and if you are at top legend it might be a little bit difficult in order to get this deck working at the lower ranks because you have to worry more about paladins and whatnot but even against like some aggro decks like mech rogue for example this deck is still performing somewhat well and honestly i think the smothering starfish is a little bit to a little bit of the reason why this is happening because now you can deal with the big mechs and i'm pretty sure that's the main reason why this is in the deck is to make that unfavored matchup into a 50 50 almost positive win rate matchup because i've looked at the stats so far and it just there is nothing that beats this deck except for itself it really is a druid meta game right now so if you guys aren't in top legend right now if you don't want to see only druids, maybe you could be a little bit happy with your with your four-digit ranking because at least you'll see some diversity. But if you're somebody that really doesn't like to go up against druid, specifically jailer druid doing all of this uninteractive nonsense, then I would steer clear of top legend because until a balance patch happens again, this deck is not going away. It wasn't gadgets and that's the problem. It's honestly just druid in general because I really can't pinpoint what exactly is the problem with this deck except for maybe the seedling giving you you know four card draw for uh a four card draw and 20 mana when you combine it with your solar eclipse life binders gift is still kind of like a really powerful card in my opinion that is absolutely the reason why nourish is busted because now we can play it for four mana it might actually be the nourish now but i really don't want to see nourish get hit because then that kills every other ramp deck so it's just like i really don't know what blizzard is going to do with this deck because it is definitely the best deck to be playing right now but oh my god is it really annoying to only see druids on the ladder and honestly the rest of the decks that i'm going to be showing you are the decks that are trying their hardest in order to beat druid
which is the reason why Mech Rogue makes it on the list here, because this deck is just, it's really consistent, even though this card did get nerfed, but it doesn't really change how powerful this deck is. It just gets one less attack, and, you know, that's two less damage off the Wind Fury. It doesn't really change how good the Snoop is as a card. If this would have gone to four mana, then it definitely would have brought back this deck a little bit, but the fact that you can just, you know, turn one, uh, one, one Divine Shield, and then potentially get this nerf undone, uh, if you play it on coin, then yeah, this this just really doesn't slow down the deck at all. So Mech Rogue is still an absolute, you know, powerhouse, not only at top legend, but on your way to legend. And a lot of these decks you can, that are that are playable on top legend are definitely decks that you can take on your legend grind. But there are, like, some of these decks do require a little bit of finesse. And even though people want to say this deck is just an ungabunga aggro deck that just vomits all of the stats, there are ways of being able to play this at a high skill cap to where, you know, you're not just playing all of your resources. You can sometimes stagnate your resources in order to pressure your opponent throughout the entirety of the game versus just throwing everything as early as you can and then it gets removed and then suddenly you cry because you got silenced. This is one of those decks that can be a little bit harder to play than some people give credit to, but in all honesty, when this deck kind of plays itself more times than not, especially on your way to Legend, it could be easy just to fall into the just vomit your stats as quickly as possible game plan every single time that you play this deck. But if you're somebody that wants a lot of easy wins, Mech Rogue is definitely a powerhouse on the ladder right now. Same thing with Warrior. Warrior has barely changed, even though Sanitize did go to 5 mana, but this card just should have been 5 mana to begin with. It is still a massively powerful card, so the nerfs really didn't impact this deck all too much, in my uh, in my opinion. But this deck just stays the same now that Yogg-Saron Unleashed is just an absolute core card, and any deck that plays uh, enough spells in order to discount this card to like five zero mana and warrior has lots of spells in this deck and barely any minions so it definitely makes sense in order to run the yog in this deck but odin warrior is still really good the only reason why a lot of top legend players are running into this deck is because it is really bad into the druid deck because the druid can draw throughout its entire deck then give you the fatigue deck and then destroy your deck so even if you do play a brawl in order to get rid of the um in order to get rid of, like, the Tony, for example, you are still going to be taking fatigue damage, and your opponent can still play more minions, as well as, like, an Ignis weapon with, like, 10 mana, getting themselves 8 drops. Like, the Druid matchup is really abysmal to the point where if you know what you are doing as the Druid deck, I think it is almost impossible to lose to a Warrior unless they get, like, double from the Depths into Odin by, like, turn 4 or turn 5. So it's just one of those things to where this deck is still massively powerful, but its presence at top legend is fading just because Druid is the powerhouse. And that really is the, the point that I want to uh, solidify on this video, is that Druid really is in its own class, and all the other decks that are trying to survive a top legend, are they don't care about any other matchup other than just bullying Druid. And the next deck that I'm going to show you is exactly what I am talking about. People literally hate Druid so much that they're running Soul Seeker and Priest. This should tell you how bad the Druid problem is because we are running every single disruption card that is even possible except for like a Cult Neophyte, but we do have Speaker Stompers still. We have Soul, uh, soul Seekers, we have Dirty Rats, we have, uh, we, we, we just, we have everything that we want to try and disrupt with Speaker Stomper discounting spells and just, oh my freaking god, man. I cannot believe that we are in a metagame where Soul Seeker is legitimately seeing play as a way of uh, trying to disrupt the biggest bad that we have in Hearthstone right now. And luckily, the Light at Burns can deal with whatever the Druid plays. But then it's just this deck is just not worth it unless you are only going up against Druids. So some, I, okay, we're getting a comment right now. Hey yo. Yo, what's going on, Goomba? I am recording a video right now. Well, regardless, I'm just going to go ahead and just get rid of that so we don't have to worry about more comments. But it's nice to see that the Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash Clark, uh, Clark screen is always active. But regardless, this is just the problem that I'm trying to paint where Control Priest isn't even playing Control Priest. It's just playing Control Druid because we just literally need every single tool possible in order to make that matchup even remotely winnable. And even though this deck is apparently playable at top legend, it's not even that good of a matchup in all honesty, because this deck needs to hit its good cards, and if you don't draw well, you just simply do not win the game. So th this is just the biggest problem with Druid, is that even when you put everything into your deck po uh, possible in order to disrupt them, they are still winning Hearthstone games more times than not.
And the number 5 deck in the top 1,000 Legend decks is going to have to go to Nature Shaman because this deck, can, it doesn't compete with Druid, but it can kill Druid if they don't do their combo as soon as possible. Like, you can still get turn 6 ODKs with this deck, and every now and again you can just, like, tempo your schoolings and get some chip damage in to where you can just do, like, a 25 damage combo instead of, like, a 30 damage combo. But the biggest issue with Druid right now is the fact that they can also gain a lot of armor. So you're pretty much going to have to go into the game plan of going for full combo more times than not and one card i actually got from uh from my new uh cards is a second uh flash of lightning so i might have this deck in all golden uh pretty soon in all honesty and i'm kind of excited about that just need to get a golden yogs around now uh but nature shaman is still a powerhouse deck at top legend to where some players are still trying to make this work to get like qualifications uh for future uh masters tours and for worlds as well uh, but everybody on the last day yesterday was just playing Druid. But if you want a way to try and counteract it, this deck can technically do it. But it's just one of those things to where, I hate to say this, but it's a solitaire meta to where if you draw your combo first before they draw their combo, then of course you're going to win the game. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people are going to not enjoy in this particular meta is how solitaire-like top legend really is. But I don't want this to scare people from hitting legend itself because there is diversity in uh, there is diversity going up until legend. But once you hit a certain threshold in legend, then the diversity completely drops off and it's just a bunch of people trying to win the game. Because again, there's people trying to go for worlds, there are people trying to get that rank 1 legend, and there really is only one deck that could do that right now, and that is Druid. So Hearthstone, if you're listening, game designers, if you're listening, we're, we might be in some emergency uh, areas right now to where uh, Druid needs an emergency patch sooner rather than later. And it really is, you know, disheartening to say this, especially with all the changes that were made in the last balance patch, because we got a lot of stuff. We got buffs, we got nerfs, and we got a lot of different game modes being shaken up. But in top legend uh, standard right now, it is not diverse, it is not balanced, and there is literally only one deck playable to where the rest of the decks that i had to put on this deck list for top legend are the only decks that could even somewhat compete with it on a theoretical level oh yeah yoy but now that we've talked about druid let's go ahead and get into the legend landscape to where if these are the decks that you want to play in order to hit legend and hs replay actually put out a post not too long ago talking about their top five best decks uh after the first couple of days of the balance patch to where we have Silverhand Paladin, Unholy Death Knight, and Rage Warrior, Drum Druid, and Undead Shadow Priest. Honestly, like, most of these decks are on this list. I have a kind of different in Rage Warrior list that I want to show off. I do also have this Unholy Death Knight deck in here as well. But I think that Drum Druid is another solid uh, solid deck if you do want to play this deck. It's a little bit different now with the, uh, the mini set being released, but it doesn't even run that mini set card. And now we're all in on Zombie and uh, Plot of Sin. I don't really mind Plot of Sin, but I really just don't like Zombie in this deck. But all things considered, I just like Drum Druid because I like the, the list that I made at the very beginning of the expansion. But if you want a simple deck that'll carry you uh, throughout the uh, throughout the, the Diamond Ranks, then this is definitely a, f a fine deck to be playing because Crusader Aura just simply wins games by turn 4. It's kind of hilarious how this deck doesn't even stop Druid but this is a deck that I saw some people playing at Top Legend to try and counteract it, but they quickly realized that unless you just have the Crusader Aura by 4, it is just not a winnable matchup because you can't win by pressuring with, with dudes. You can't win by buffing up your minions with maybe like a Katori combo because there were some people running Katori, but this deck still runs the jukebox totems and whatnot. This deck goes very wide very quickly, but without your pseudo bloodlust happening every time that you go up against the druid matchup this deck just doesn't work at top legend but going into legend this deck is still massively powerful i'm really surprised not to see this in hs replay game data but aggro uh arcane hunter is still a fine deck to be playing right now and one thing that i'm definitely a little bit you know on the fence about is just how good star power is as a card i'm pretty sure this is here for a specific matchup but i can't tell you what matchup this is trying to counteract because I feel like, again, this is what I've been talking about all t uh, throughout this entire video, but Druid really is the thing that you need to beat, and I don't think that Star Power really helps out with that. If you want to make this deck maybe a little bit better, you could cut this for, like, a cat trick, so that way you're just all in 
on getting the secret values and generating board as quickly as possible. But maybe the landscape going up to Legend is still, you know, rewarding people playing Star Power, especially considering that Brightwing is still very much a playable card, even though this card used to cost three mana. Uh, but regardless, Aggro Arcane Hunter is still a powerhouse deck that can get a lot of damage with Kraken Banes, with uh, your Aggramar giving you a five attack weapon, uh, Eversong Portal creating a bunch of 4-4 four, four minions, not to mention just like the, the synergies with Arcane Shot, as well as the new spell that came out, Celestial Shot. I really dislike the design of this, where it's like, oh, okay, so for four mana, I can deal seven damage, essentially, and that high roll can be even uh, even higher when you put on the, the Brightwing, as well as the Silvermoon Far Striders, to where this could just be a disgusting amount of burst all at once, but if you are if you're going up against a lot of armor decks, then this burst really isn't as good as you would want it to be. But if you're looking for an easy deck in order to climb up to legend, I think that this would be a fine deck to do it with. Plague DK has been buffed, but how good is the buff actually for the Death Knight class? It, to be honest, the only thing that really matters, I feel like, is the fact that Tomb Trader is a card that you can now run in Unholy DK as just a really solid AoE option. But in order for this to be a solid AoE option, you absolutely need to have the rest of these Plague cards. And this was like the deck that people were trying to use to counteract Druid, because if you do play Helia on turn 4, it is really difficult for the Druid to cycle through their deck. And then you have, you know, Frost Plagues uh, disrupting their mana uh, investment turns, Unholy Plagues in order to give you a board, and Blood Plague is just essentially deal 2 damage in that matchup. But this does have some ways that it could be effective against Druid, only if the Hell Yeah comes out by turn 3, turn 4. And even then, it's still not that impactful, because the Druid is just doing so much insanity to where you can't deal with it. So, this deck kind of got built in a way that it's focused all in on being aggro. And to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of the, uh, the Skeletal Sidekick. There will be some, uh, some other lists and other ideas that I will uh, have in a future video focusing on this archetype in general. And I think Warshack has a video showcasing this as of right now. So, go ahead and check out his channel if you want the uh, immediate sauce on what makes Plague DK really good in the Unholy archetype. But the one thing I really do enjoy about this deck is just the fact that you can still play Grave Strength as a way of being, you know, the aggressive deck in the situations to where the plagues don't just end the game. But you still have all of the plague cards in this deck. You can make zero mana, Chained Guardians. This deck does feel like it has a lot of staying power, but I question if this is going to be the perfect 30 for the Unholy Plague archetype because I did, I think I saw someone running the uh the murloc the murlocula as well as running the new four mana uh, unholy card and honestly i don't remember what it's called uh there it is sinister soul cage this seems like a pretty goofy way of trying to make like a really big lifesteal minion that can give you a little bit more staying power but i'm pretty sure this is just a meme because the only other card that i can think about using this on would maybe be the Distress uh, Calvadier, so that way you can shuffle even more plagues into the deck. But uh, I couldn't find that deck. I saw it on Twitter, unfortunately, didn't like the post, so that way I don't... I, I lost it. I don't know where it is, unfortunately. But if you want a way to be able to play Unholy DK with the Plague Package, this looks like a very solid archetype. However, you can probably cut out the Skeletal Sidekick for whatever it is that you want. Me, personally, I like the Battlefield Necromancer as a replacement for the sidekick, but I still think that there's some optimization with this deck that we just haven't considered yet. Next up is another deck that I'll be showcasing, I believe, in tomorrow's video, and it is Fino's Enrage Warrior. And in all honesty, if you don't like some of these tech cards, you can go ahead and put in uh, the, the Grom and the Ramornia in this deck if you want more uh, big boss cards in this deck. So you could cut out Okani and you can cut out the Speaker Stomper in order to put in the Ramornia as well as the, uh, as well as the Grom. But to be honest, the reason why these cards have been cut from the deck is not because they're not good or they're not, like, good finishers. At Top Legend, again, because of Druid, you have to be ending the game as quickly as possible, and having these big mana cards in your hand not doing anything is really not what you want to do while you're in Top 1000 Legend. You could still easily run these cards if you're going on your way to Legend, and you could still run the Okani and the Speaker Stomper as a way of getting in the way of some of the Druids that you might see. But to be honest, the another reason why I like the Speaker Stomper 
is because if you don't want it in your hand in order to mess up with the uh, the extractor turns, you can just trade it away for one mana versus having to play it for four mana to, to play it out of your hand so that way the animal extractor can buff cards that you actually want. So that is like one reason why I kind of like this card. It may not be the perfect 30. You might be more sold on Ramornia and Grom, and that's absolutely fine if you want to run those cards. But this is also kind of an easier way in order to make this deck more available to budget players. So if you're someone that can't afford those two legendaries, you don't necessarily need them, and I think that's just good news. But the main reason why you don't need them is because of Battle Worn Faceless. This card just makes us go all in on crazed wretch possibilities. To where if we buff this up a bunch with the Anima Extractor, if we have a Depths already on the field, then for 4 mana we can deal a lot of damage, and for 6 mana you're probably just going to OTK if you have Double Faceless onto an Enraged Crazed Wretch. Because this is already a 5 attack minion if you use the Depths on it, so you don't even really need that many buffs off the Anima Extractor in order to really make this combo worth it. And again, this is another reason why cutting the big minions might actually be the way here and this is Fino's idea about trying to make this archetype a little bit more popular and I ended up going nine and three with this deck when I play tested it so I think it's absolutely a fine deck to be playing now that um Enraged Warrior is finally playable people are starting to take a little bit of a, of a detour from Odin Warrior but if you want my honest opinion Odin Warrior is just probably still better so if you're on the fence of playing either Enraged or Odin I gotta give it to Odin Warrior, but if you're someone that's sick and tired of playing the Odin Warrior right now, this is a good refreshing deck that really makes you consider some of your plays because sometimes Enrage Warrior has some of these really difficult turns to make. But I would highly recommend this deck if you're looking for something other than uh, Odin Warrior to be playing on the ladder right now. And my last deck on the best decks going to Legend is going to be Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest actually has some game against Druid as long as they don't get the Aranar in order to get a massive Reno turn. But the boards that this deck can generate are absolutely massive. I'm still not 100% sold on Soul Burner Varia. So if you don't want to run this card, you could pretty much sub it for whatever other undead card you really want to slot into the deck. But one card I feel like I am a little bit sold on is actually Amon Thule. Amon Thule feels like it's a great way of giving this deck a little bit more staining power, uh, sustaining power into the late game, so that way you can use random legendary minions to sometimes scam games, being able to destroy gigantic taunts, so that way you don't have to trade your minions can be very impactful as well. And worst case scenario, you could just summon a 6 drop and then get another minion. Like, there's just a lot of ways of being able to pressure with this deck to where everyone thinks that this deck is just, you know, focusing on killing your opponent by turn 5, I would actually argue that's not the case. What this deck can do is pressure literally every single turn until it runs out of resources, but that's why you run a lot of cards that give you resources, like the Psychic Conjurer, the Mind Eater, drawing a card with Atonement, getting cards off the Varia, and then even going so far as to run the Amon Thule for even more extra cards. There's just a lot of sustaining power that this deck has, even though it may seem like it's all in on just trying to kill you with the Shadow Spirits and Undying Allies combo. So I feel like this deck has a little bit more finesse than people want to give it credit, myself included. I don't like Shadow Priest personally. Just, I personally just don't like aggro decks because sometimes it feels like you just have to do the one, two, and the three. And if you don't do that, your deck is automatically not performing the way that you want it to. But this deck does have a little bit more waves of seeing play now that you have actual waves that you can that you can generate turn after turn versus just throwing all of your stats as quickly as possible like a mech rogue so if you're looking for a little bit of a different way of playing priest as well as a different way of playing aggro then i actually would recommend the shadow priest as a way of well, being a little bit more diverse, even though I really don't like to see this deck on ladder, just don't cue it into me and you'll be absolutely fine. And the last five decks that I'll be showcasing in this video are going to be the most fun decks that I have seen from this patch to where some people are actually doing really well with uh, these kind of archetypes. Case in point, Brian Kibler was climbing at top 300 legend, trying to counter the Druid Menace with his take on a Blood Unholy Death Knight. To where we're still running the, uh, the, uh, the Plague cards. This is referred to as the Red Death by some people, and I think that's just a great name. But the reason why we are running the red cards in this deck is because Gnome Muncher is a great, uh, is a great way of getting a lot of damage with some lifesteal. But the big reason why I feel like people are doing this is to play Patchwork as a way of disrupting Druid as effectively as possible. Because the only minion you really don't want to hit off the Patchwork is going to be the Containment Lasher. So I think that this actually has some real 
real ways of being uh, a meta relevant deck if Druid is still going to uh, to rule the top legend ranks. But I'll also I'll just go ahead and say this: this deck really doesn't have that good of a win rate, all things considered. Like it barely has a fifty percent. Uh, at the legend ranks when I checked it on HS replay not too long ago because we finally have enough data on this deck in order to get some idea of what it's good into. We don't have matchup specifics, we just have general win rate over like a couple of games uh, in top legend, but it's kind of hilarious how quickly this archetype was being experimented with. I saw Fino trying this out, Kibler made hit this version of the deck with Colt Neophytes, so this deck is really trying to bully the other archetypes that play a lot of spells, and there's just a lot of minion pressure with this deck, so you're always trying to make a board, play the hell yeah as quickly as possible, and then disrupt your opponent in order to make your board stick, so that way you're your patchwork can hopefully end the game by getting rid of those big minions your opponent definitely doesn't want to lose from their deck but this seems like a really fun way of being able to play a multi rune death knight deck to where i'm going to recommend it if you want to play it for fun but this is a deck that might be a little bit challenging if you are trying to go for the top ranks of hearthstone but i will say this this deck is very uh, surprising when your opponent sees it for the very first time to where you might be able to get a few cheap wins just because your opponent's not expecting to see a Gnome Muncher or a Patchwork coming from a Plague Death Knight. Before I talk about this deck, no, I would not recommend playing this, but th there's actually someone uh, that is trying to make Earthen Paladin work at Top Legend. His name is Quark, and he's been in a lot of our videos before, just in the gameplay videos, as someone that we see all the time at Top Legend. He's always trying to make some kind of weird archetype work that people don't expect, because he's trying to go with the surprise element in order to get some pretty easy victories. And well, with the new change to Tears Tears, this deck still pretty much functions exactly how it did, to where we are running Pelican Divers, we are running Victorious uh, Vicrolls, as well as Eggs, in order to generate a bunch of little minions, even going so far as running a Maze Guide, which, I, I, again, I would not recommend this deck, but I had to put it on this list because it is by far the weirdest deck that I have seen since the patch has gone out, and he was actually performing pretty well and almost hit top 100 with this deck. I wish I had some uh, some comments from him to talk about this deck a little bit more on some of these decisions, but this just seems to be a deck that is going all in on summoning as many minions as possible in the early game, so that way you have some pressure, so that way your earthen cards can actually deal some damage when they eventually start summoning minions by turn 4, turn 5, and your opponents hopefully lost about half of their health by then. But one thing that is just very simple, Katori light, uh, light Blade combos are absolutely insane. This deck, I pretty sh I'm pretty sure, actually did beat me by turn 5, and it's not because he was playing Earthen cards. He was just playing an aggressive Paladin with a bunch of minions, and then had an insane Katori turn to where he played Katori into Furkelthalos into Double Garden's Grace by like turn 5 or something like that, and it absolutely destroyed not only my will to play, but it destroyed me on an emotional level. So this deck might be a somewhat meta breaker. Maybe I'm saying that with a pause because I don't want to throw that out very, uh, very willy nilly. But oh my god, did this deck feel good when it actually had its really good curve plays. And since Earthen Paladin got buffed, I really wanted to showcase it in one way or another. And this seems like the only way to play the archetype. And one thing that I do need to point out, because some of you may, may be asking, why the hell is Pelican Diver in this deck? It's actually an ingenious inclusion that I think was started by the Geminator. The reason why this is in the deck is because you just want to play it on the turn that you want to set up your Keeper's Strength. So you have the Dormant Minion, which essentially awakens the next turn. Then you can play Keeper's Strength in order to deal 6 damage AoE for effectively 4 mana. So this actually might be a pretty cool way of being able to play this, but you do have to think about how it can disynergize with the Boogie Down, because I will also tell uh, tell you this, if you play Boogie Down as a finale, this Dormant card does not get the not get the taunt. Not like it really matters because it has 1 HP, but just, just so you guys are aware of the interaction before it takes you by surprise, Pelican Diver does not get taunt from the Boogie Down. But if you're looking for a way of taking your opponent by surprise, this is probably the biggest surprise deck that you can play on the ladder right now. I've showcased this deck on a recent video, but I'm showcasing it in this video as well, because my friend and former Grandmaster Kales Luna actually managed to hit rank 21 legend with this take on the deck, and just in time was, as, was playing this deck as well, probably not to the same extent, but I did see that guy chilling around top 1000 legend as well. So it's pretty interesting how this take of the deck 
that is all in on just making a really big hero power dagger with deadly poisons with harmonic hip-hop and mic drops actually does feel somewhat pretty good against the druid menace that you will be experiencing if you're playing at top legend now granted i feel like it's a lot harder to win against druid now because they have a lot more armor cards and they're running anr but this deck was specifically crafted in order to beat up on the miracle druid that everyone was playing with gadgets in before that card got nerfed so some of those stats are a little bit from the before the patch but he was still playing this deck after the patch went live and ended up solidifying a rank 21 legend finish at the end of the season so i think that this deck has a lot of sustaining power and i would not be surprised to see this deck uh kind of make a a meta breaker level of emergence because it really is a powerful deck that i don't really feel like anybody is playing and my video yesterday about it covering it ended up getting like you know almost six thousand views and i feel like it's just because it's a deck that people really were not expecting so if you want to take somebody by surprise of playing rogue and you're not playing mech rogue then this is a deck that can still kill people by turn five but you're just going to be dealing a lot of face damage with gigantic daggers. And one thing that I do want to point out is I feel like Prison Breaker is not being utilized as uh, as effectively as it can be. Uh, but it's mostly due to the fact that it's not good against Druid, so people aren't playing it. But I feel like there are more decks that really want to run this card. Like, I saw this in a few Hunter decks, for example. Might be pretty good there. Maybe there's an Earthen Paladin that wants to play this card. Not 200% sure about that. But Prison Breaker really does feel like it's one of the best cards in this mini set. Obviously being second to Yogg, because Yogg is insane. But it's just massive and hilarious to me how good this card actually feels to play. The last decks that I'm going to show you guys are going to be decks that I've already showcased in some deck spotlight videos, but they absolutely deserve a spot on this list because we're talking about fun decks, and what is more fun than playing infinite Yogg-Sarans? The other deck I'm going to be showing you is also playing infinite Yogg-Sarans, but this is one way of being able to do it in Priest, to where the whole point of this deck is to play your Crimson Clergies, draw a bunch of cards with Funnel Cakes, fan clubs and even going so far as to use holy novas to get some card draw you can run switcheroos in order to draw your key minions but the main way that we win with this deck is to play fizzle with uh with power cord synchronize as well as like whatever minions that we're trying to make infinite copies of if you're sick and tired of warrior running over you with their face damage you can keep copying the glacial shards so that way their, their face is frozen literally every single turn you can use love everlasting in order to discount the power cord synchronize to zero mana so that way you don't have to worry about the mana cost as well as your hand space because two mana with this deck is really massive when you consider what the curve of this deck actually looks like but you also have ignis weapons that you can copy you have infinite yog sarans you have infinite dirty rats in order to try and beat up on maybe some of these druid decks that you might be seeing it's kind of hard in order to beat Drew with this deck in all honesty, but there are ways of technically doing it. So I wanted to showcase this deck because not only is it a lot of fun, it is extremely skill testing. This is definitely not the definition of a solitaire deck, but it is kind of a solitaire deck because you have to get to the combo. And then once you do reach the combo, it feels almost impossible to lose with it. But this is one of those decks that really does give you a lot of ways of being creative with your lethals because the skill cap of this deck is just really massive and i just have to recommend it to anybody that's trying to play some fun stone so if you like the idea of going infinite with yogs infinite with weapons and even in infinite with glacial shards i would highly recommend this version of infinite priest that was uh started by john bray but this was a list that i saw from tic tac and i think he had someone else that he credited for the list but i can't remember their name so i'm just gonna shout out tic tac who also reached twitch partner recently so let's go, man. We got we got a lot of love in the Hearthstone community. And the last deck that I'm going to show you guys is a creation of my own that was inspired by chat. Because someone was like, I saw Infinite Priest. What if we did the same thing in Rogue? And this deck is essentially trying to do the exact same thing that the other deck was doing. Going infinite with Yogg-Sarans and Fizzle. And the way that you can go infinite with Fizzle is by uh, snapshotting the Shadow Step. So that way you can play Fizzle, you can Shadow Step, and then you can just play the Snapshot get specific cards that you want depending on the matchup you still have glacial shard to do the exact same thing against warriors and to a lower extent druid but now that miracle druid isn't as popular maybe this card gets cut from the deck but i still like the idea of running it in order to stop like big minions as well so this card still has a lot of applications in my opinion you got the one dirty rat as like the flex card that you need in order to disrupt the key combo cards in certain decks that you don't want to have them play minions against but the one card that i feel like is mvp and i already talked about this in my video about it is sun flurry clergy the reason why we're not running uh ignis uh and forge and that one card that gives you healing as well is because if you're playing an infinite deck 
You just need to be able to throw out your hand, and this card can give you a lot of holy cards that cost more than like 5 mana, and those are just really hard to throw out of your hand, unfortunately. And this is one of those decks to where if you have one card become two, it's going to become four, and then that'll, that, that will screw up the infinite combo. So that's the reason why we're not winning with the Forge Package and Ignis. We are just focusing on playing Breakdance with the Yogg Saron, so that way you have a 7-5 Yogg after clearing your opponent's turn every single time. So the cards that you want to copy in the Fizzle are going to be your Shadow Step, your Yogg, and your Break Dance. Those are the most important cards that you need to have in that snapshot when you're going infinite, because not only are you going to clear every board that your opponent plays, but you pressure with an actual minion that will deal damage going into that next turn, and lucky, uh, luckily with the way this deck is, uh, is built, is you don't have to worry about anything else other than just surviving to this last part of the game, to where you have these 7-5s actually winning you the game through through tempo so i think this deck has a lot of applications uh overall but one thing i will definitely say is that it's definitely a meme you do not want to play this deck going into top legend being like "Ooh, i'm gonna be able to bully some of these meta decks because it might be really difficult to do that but one other synergy i want to point out is the tar slick tar slick with prison breaker is literally a five mana deal six aoe option that's available to rogue that seems a little bit nutty, and depending on the, how the meta was shaping out, this actually might be a way to play like a control rogue, or to, to give AoE to a rogue deck that really needs it. But I still can't say that this deck is a meta-relevant deck, and it's definitely a meme, but if you want to play some Funstone, and if you want to really make your opponents frustrated with infinite Yogs and infinite Fizzles, this is a deck that I would highly recommend in order to get your meme on. But there you guys have it. Those are the top five decks in Legend, the top five decks in order to hit Legend, as well as my top five fun decks that you can play if you're just trying to have some fun on Ladder or fun against your friends in Hearthstone. So don't forget, if you do enjoy this kind of content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified about any of our future updates. We also have a Patreon, so I want to give a shout out to Will, Mucklife, Marshall, as well as Kevin for keeping us supported on the Patreon. You can get extra perks for doing that, like getting coaching or getting deck optimizations. Uh, there's also ways of being able to support the channel by getting some t-shirts and some sweatshirts. I'm, I love these designs, and one of them was made by somebody in chat. So if you want to get a badass shirt in the process of supporting one of your favorite Hearthstone creators, go ahead and check out the link in the description below for all of that information. Thank you guys for making it to the end of this video, and we'll see you for the next one.